All right, so I finished the installation of the motor. So this is the uh, Tegan Type D. Now this motor uh, was originally designed, from my understanding, so this is the box for uh, drag racing, for no prep drag cars. Uh, but it's the same can size as the Pro 4 HD. And this one here, this is the 4300 kV, this is actually my favorite motor. This is, I would say by far my favorite 2S motor. Uh, this one is 2S as well, uh, connected to an RX-8. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite ESCs, if not my favorite, uh, if you're using a four pull motor. If you're using two pull motor, uh, I would not recommend this. Um, many of the guys that I know that tried running this on two pull motors, uh, I don't know, I guess it wasn't working very well. So go with a hobby wing. Uh, I've never had issues with a hobby wing on two poles. Uh, but that's a just a quick little note. But on high demanding systems, this thing has been awesome and reliable. Uh, so I may order some more. But uh, definitely have to swap out the transmitter because, well, uh, my TQIs keep wetting the bed. Uh, I only have one left, uh, but Futaba, these are way better, so I just use my regular transmitter. Plus the range is a lot farther. Uh, uh, TrueTech, definitely use a TrueTech battery tie just in case you take a really hard crash. It secures the battery. Uh, make sure that you have fresh oil in your shocks and they're not too soft because you need a little bit of resistance, but don't make them too hard either or else the car will bounce because then your only suspension will be the tires. And these are not really meant to be suspension. Uh, wheels and tires, I'm using sweeps. These are actually the same wheels and tires as the other run. So I do have a video doing runs with this motor right here. And this motor is awesome. It can run all day. The motor doesn't care. That's with the 40 tooth pinion and the 48 tooth spur. Now that spur is by Hot Racing. Uh, so make sure you look them up. Uh, I don't remember what the part numbers are. I think maybe in the other videos, but hot, hot racing, just look for hot racing. It's a 4848. So 48 tooth, 48 pitch made for this vehicle. And I'm going to put some links in the description as well of when I did the original installation, when I was going to run uh, this motor right here, because I did use... Um, I had to put some O-rings just to keep the spacing correct so that it wouldn't shift. So that was sort of the only downside of that. Uh, you I definitely just, uh, sometimes I don't mention it, but I'm gonna mention it this time. I do have a spool in the front. Uh, so I do not have a differential, it's a spool. You definitely need that in the front, uh, just the front. And then these are hot racing as well. So these are the CB uh, drive shafts right in here. You can't really see. Uh, let's see if I turn the wheel right in there. Uh, these are the ones to go. Uh, Traxxas does make some. Uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, uh, they kept breaking. Uh, so little pins over here on the side, they kept just sliding out. Uh, so it was a pain. So I got rid of them, just recycled them. Uh, and then just got this. Uh, these here and these have been durable. I mean, they've taken so much abuse like you wouldn't believe. So. Uh, just to sum it up, you need a spool. Uh, I would get the CV drive shafts, shafts. And then I also have, you can't really see, but those are metal. Uh, those are those are Traxxas, but those are little metal cups. The reason why is the rear still has the plastic. <laughs> I don't think we said it's come out. Uh, but the rear is still plastic, but if you keep the plastic in the front, uh, it'll chew them up. It'll destroy them. Uh, so definitely go with the metal in the front. The thing that you need to sort of bulletproof is the front of the car. Uh, the rear, you can keep the stock, it'll run fine. But if you want to, say, bulletproof the rear, then go for it, absolutely. Uh, a pair of these drive shafts are about 30 US dollars as of the time of this video, just under. Uh, spool, I don't remember. Uh, you can go with the Traxxas one if you like, or you can go with the Hot Racing, both of them work. I've used them both. Uh, but definitely go with the TrueTech uh, RX-8, this motor. Now. I do love this motor, uh, so watch that video. Uh, I do break 100 kilometers per hour, uh, which is, uh, so I do break 60 miles per hour based on that with this motor, so do watch that video, see how that turned out. 
Uh, this is uh, 4300 kV, same exact gearing, everything. So this one here, kV is greater. You have 6500 kV on this motor. That's about, that should be about 50% more kV. Now, will you get 50% more speed? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately it doesn't quite work that way once you start getting to higher speeds. It's not linear, it's actually a curve. So you're gonna lose, uh, well, first of all, uh, I don't have a dyno to dyno the torque, but given that it's the same size can and this has more KV, uh, I would have to take out the rotors, but the rotors have to be the difference. Or maybe it's the windings. Maybe the rotors are the same and it's different windings. The point is they're not identical motors, so it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. Uh, so as long as, I, so my goal, what I calculated was if I could get at least 25% more speed, I would be happy. Uh, so we will see. So I will spoil, if you haven't watched the other video, I will spoil uh, the results. But if I can get 25% more speed, I'll be happy. Uh, if not, then, Oh, well, it'll be a sad time. Now, the body that I'm going to be running will actually be my USGT body. So this USGT body, I completely forgot who makes it. Uh, I'm going to keep looking, but if somebody knows who makes this body, please let me know as soon as possible because I really like it. Uh, and it's a very stable body, uh, and I want to get some more. Uh, I guess I can go down the USGT list of approved bodies this was one of the approved bodies i think if not oops uh something else i am using the uh 2.0 this is what generally comes in the mustang so these would generally be in here so i actually took the screw out took these out and then i screwed them on the holes that are on the outside so that it holds the body as far out as possible so it stabilizes the body more uh when it flexes and then in the front, I'm running these. Uh, these I found that are good enough, but I think I may end up installing the equivalent of this in the front for the same reason. Uh, now the body was a little too low, so uh, is a little too low, sorry. So I'm sure it's probably uh, going to scrape a little, but that's, that's all right, uh, not a big deal. Uh, I mean, well, we'll see. Uh, I'm leaving it that way because if I break, it'll rub, probably. But once I accelerate, this will wanna, want to lift up a bit, so I don't think it'll rub. We'll see. Uh, the battery that I'm going to use for this test is this one here, which I believe was the same battery. Now, this battery is old, uh, so we'll see how it does. It should perform all right. But if you use a high quality new battery, um, uh, you should be able to get just a little more speed, possibly, possibly, or, uh, the newer batteries, uh, the, the ones that can be charged 2S batteries, but they can be charged to a slightly higher voltage. Those you would notice a speed difference. Uh, but since I used this battery with this motor, I want to use the same battery with this motor. Uh, so let me go into the speed runs. Uh, so here is the car with the USGT. Uh, it is zeroed. Uh, I'm not going to show the entire thing, but uh, a few things to note. Uh, this motor and system is very demanding on 2S. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, would I recommend it for, let's just say, long drives, having a bunch of fun and just bashing around for hours with friends no no i would not it it doesn't last very long you're probably going to get about five minutes of run time doing speed runs like this i end up doing a total of uh five speed runs four that i'm going to show uh they're all very close back to back starting from the very first one uh and this is the very first one now at first uh, there was some loose gravel i just want to make sure nothing was in the gears nothing was binding that's why i brought it in but i am going to do a speed run right after this another thing i want to note is the part without paint between the lines those yellow lines uh, that's about a car's length now what's a car's length yeah, good question but there's a mid uh you know, early 2000s, mid 2000s expedition, and there's a Silverado. You can get an idea of what the distance is between there. So between the two yellow lines and an empty space, that's about two cars. Uh, now, two cars here in the states. Not we're not talking about Fiat 500s. 
Uh, but that's the first speed one. Very, very stable. Uh, this body is truly an amazing body. Uh, I'm not sure if they make a very light version. I just, I really don't like regular TC bodies. But this one is the first one. This is 124 kilometers per hour. So did I get that 25% uh, increase in speed? Absolutely not. No, I did not. I just missed it. Um, so that's 124. Uh, so I'm going to just jump over to the second run. Uh, so I did not, unfortunately, manage the... 25% uh, that I was hoping for. I only managed about a 19% increase, unfortunately. But eh, it's still all right. It was still fun. Uh, keep in mind, this is 2S. Uh, and this is a lot faster than uh, the Valenium motor on 3S already, as is with the gearing that's applied. And that's something I also want to mention. So 124 kilometers per hour, for those of you that use miles, that's 77 miles per hour. Uh, I use both, so I don't really care. Uh, so that's about 77 miles per hour. So the this one, this run is 126 kilometers per hour. Uh, that is just over 78 miles per hour. So I'm shy of 80. I was hoping I could uh, hit 80%. Now, uh, at the end, I'm going to show you a picture of the under uh, chassis, just the undercarriage. And the rear was scraping the entire time. And I heard a scrape, but I, I just assumed it was the body. It didn't sound right, though. Uh, but it wasn't the body. It was actually the chassis. So you're going to see the chassis was hitting. Now, solution would be... Uh, thicker springs and thicker oil. I should probably be running uh, maybe 450 uh, CST. Uh, I want to say that's about 40 weight. I could be wrong. Uh, but here we go. There's another 126 right after that. And it all depends. So the speed's going to depend on the stretch. Uh, there's a dip somewhere down there that sometimes I hit, and that's why I don't get full speed so soon. I am going to show you how approximation of how far I'm going to get full speed. But going back to the shocks, uh, I definitely need stiffer springs. Now, uh, the reason why I'm saying thicker springs and not adding the preloads is uh, I don't have preloads in it, but the problem with the preloads is that will affect your droop and your ride height. That's the reason why I want to keep the same ride height, just want to be stiffer. So springs is what I need. Uh, and that's something that a lot of people don't pay attention to. That's 124. They're all, so, you know, 124 easily. Now, something is a lot of power, so as you can see, you cannot just punch it right off, right off the bat. You will spin out. All four wheels will just start spinning out completely. Uh, so now I'm going to show you uh, approximately how much distance you actually need before you can go full throttle. So this is really cool. Is it for everybody? No, it's not for everybody. And the reason why is if you're doing this in your backyard, there's if you have enough space, then you know, good for you. Uh, but you know, most of us probably don't. Uh, if you're doing this out on your street, this can be dangerous. So don't do this out on your street with a bunch of cars, maybe some pedestrians. Uh, keep in mind, this thing's braking 70 miles per hour. So there are one, two, three, four. Those are four markers. I'm going to run it, and okay, there. So I hit uh, top speed. So I'm going to move the car to where I hit top speed. I'm going to show you how many of those markers. So I'm counting those markers in the street, and there are two lines. So that's about two and a half markers right there. Uh, and now, uh, temperature, I forgot my temp gun, but that's my finger on there. I don't recommend it. The motor is hot, so definitely gear uh, a lot lower. I'm going to try a video where I gear lower and see how it works out. But notice the battery. That's how much battery I consumed. So from 420, it is down to... Uh, 379 378 which is almost storage so as you can see this is this motor and system is very demanding on the battery it's definitely not something to go out and run forever and this is the chassis look at how scraped it is so definitely need a stiffer rear suspension on this thing uh, that is for sure now uh, quick little note if you get the VXL uh, VXL you would need 3s and then you would need the higher gearing which is great I mean you can use that why not 
Now I'm going to do a few replays of the speedruns just to finish my thoughts. But uh, the thing with the VXL is, one, now you have to invest on 3S batteries, which you may or may not be able to use on all of your other vehicles. If you just have 2S batteries, this is the way to go. Yes, the system is more expensive, but it's I would say it's worth it. Uh, well, consider it. It all depends on budget. Uh, but... There's no need for 3S, this is 2S only. Uh, the other video, if you watched it, where I break 60 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour, that is 2S only as well. Uh, now with the 4300 kV motor, that thing runs cool for days. This one, this one, well, not so much. It does get hot, but not as hot as the VXL would. The VXL, you, it, you would smell like something burnt. Now, do watch part one and part two with the other motor because there I actually go into the whole setup. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try to use this motor and just use the gearing that Traxxas offers, the 55 uh, spur with a 35 pinion, uh, because that should be about a 27% uh, reduction in speed just due to gearing compared to how I have it set up now uh, with the uh, 40 pinion and 48 spur. Uh, so based on my calculations, uh, just with gearing, I should be able to do about 100 kilometers per hour, about 60 miles per hour, which to be honest is plenty. Uh, so I'm going to try and see if I can do that and then get some of some other optional parts. Maybe I'll build a second one, just pick up another RX and just have the two vehicles. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what I do in the future. That being said, I hope this was informative or at least entertaining. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one.